Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Episode 94 of the 9 to 5 Fitness Podcast. I'm joined with Anabolic Gabe. Gab, how are you? How did you sleep? Mate, I'm really well because you know what? I what? woke up a winner. Yeah, you did. <laughs> and I slept pretty decently uh, after a couple uh, premiership beverages. How are you, Louis Phillips, and how did you sleep? Mate, also very well. Jovial, in fact, because <laughs> we just won a bloody grand final, mate. Didn't think I'd win my first premiership in soccer, but yep. uh, we made it happen. Won the extreme futsal football football Ooh. championship. Now, we do have a special guest on today's podcast. We have uh, a paramedic uh, mm. called Josh Joyce, and we will get into the introduction to him. But Josh, just let us talk about our premiership for a brief <laughs> second here. Give because us all good fellas. I did not think... You, me, and Prime would be winning a premiership together. I just, there's no me. sport I thought we could. And so, to give you guys a bit of context, right? The, we were second on the ladder, right? And the team we were playing, like absolute Jets, I'm talking youth prospect, A League play plays, for Australia. like playing for Australia, absolute Jets, like professional ankle breakers mm. to casual futsal players like myself and Prime. <laughs> um, we came in there with a game plan. Mind you, during the season, they flogged us, they absolutely belted us, right? So we came in with a game plan. Let's just concede the fact that they're going to have 90% possession of the ball and let's just have the forwards playing centre back as well. Just stand behind So we the ball. played park the bus and counter attack the absolute shit out of them. And mate, it worked an absolute treat. Louis was in goals, didn't have any own goals this time. Yep. I was playing centre back, holding it down and I just feed the forwards as soon as I get it. And mate... We won 7-5. How's that? Ridiculous, mate. Everyone just played a role. It was uh, actually one of the most fun sporting <clears throat> achievements I've ever been a part of. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into it. We've got Josh Joyce here. Josh, give us a bit of an intro to yourself, mate. Very exciting podcast, and thanks so much Definitely. for coming on. What do you do? Who are you? What are you interested in? No worries. Um, so, I'm a festival medic at the moment. i um, been working for a company that does quite a wide range of events, uh, mainly festivals. Uh, for probably the last six or so months now and um no i think it's amazing what you guys are doing today i think the information that um we're going to be able to provide is quite insane for the um <coughs> the listeners they'll mm. be able to take a lot home from that yeah it's it's a it's a relevant time as well obviously we've got festivals coming up and we're going to dispel a few myths hopefully sure, um yeah. keep kids pretty relaxed as you know gab's been saying like we don't have our heads in the sands we know people are going to be doing drugs and stuff so we want to make sure everyone is informed and as safe as possible isn't that right gab yeah, well, I suppose the reason we wanted to do this podcast is, you know, we can get another footy player on and ask them what their, their mm. diet and training is like, okay. and it's probably going to be the exact same as most other people. We wanted to put something out there that's a little bit different. And, you know, Louis, Louis and myself, we aren't professionals, so we wanted to chat to someone who's actually on the front line, you know, going, mm-hmm. going hard in the paint, who's, who <laughs> sees some shit there and provides some kind of realistic advice we know we're against drugs drugs are bad but if you do happen to find yourself in a bit of a, a tricky situation we want to give you some realistic advice that could save a life mm. uh, is that kind of why you wanted to do this podcast yeah 100 percent. and even if you know you the listener you're not not doing drugs well it's if your mates are doing drugs or people around you are doing drugs or just drinking too much alcohol so um let's start off with Josh like what you've yep. done in terms of festivals like yeah, what's no your main job like what well, you set up at a festival you help people out you look after people yep. tell us all about it um so basically my job's to make sure everyone's safe at the festival um medics we always set up a tent uh, there's always this big white tent so if you're ever at a festival just look out for the big white tent mm-hmm. come say hey um we've got plenty of stock plenty of um stuff floating around and there's normally quite an extensive team behind it as well. Mm. Um, my job's to be out in the mosh, out floating around the, the um, festival, I guess, floating around the grounds, make sure everyone's doing it right, everyone's um, accounted for. And if someone does happen to go down or something happens, we're, we're there to grab them and take them off to the, the tent. So you're, you're walking around the festival, doing laps, checking on people. Yeah. Are there any, yeah. Is there anything specifically you're looking for while you're doing those walks? Um, well, I think one of the first things I learned doing festival work is to not watch the festival not watch the the big crowds mm. um but look in the little spots under the trees around the corner mm. next to the fences that's that's where a lot of people yeah. tend to go when they go down such a um, good point it's not in the festival itself it's normally they realize something's up head out try to um, find a shaded more like low yeah, key and yeah. that's they might be against like bringing their mate to a medic tent which mm. we'll get into a bit later mm. yeah. but i suppose yeah you, you bang on with that I, i'd be thinking like that is probably the more low-key spot where you'd take someone if 
you wanted to lay low. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure, for sure. In terms of like, so you're walking around, what would be the most common kind of thing you, you're called to? You know, like what, what, do you, what do you normally check? Is it dehydration? Is it some like an overdose? Mm-hmm. Or what's like yeah. the main thing that you see at those festivals? Um, well, the main thing, there's quite a lot of things we do go to. Um, a lot of it's minor. I'm just going to put that out there. Most of the stuff mm-hmm. that we, we do see at festivals and do attend is relatively minor, um, whether it's someone needing a Band-Aid or stub their foot or has fallen over. Mm. Um, but the more sinister things and more um, obviously high-risk things are the overdoses and they're probably the, the hot topic for festivals, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, if you see a festival medic, you're going to be like, oh, they go to lots of ODs. Um, it's not inherently true. We do go to quite a few. Uh, but it's not our main main job if that mm. makes sense yeah absolutely and i guess like i mean we've got so many listeners who will be going to festivals you know this this coming this season and uh they're very excited which is grass yeah what's some things that they can do to make sure they're safe for the festival now nah, awesome i think this is like a really good question and i want a lot of the listeners here to take a lot of this information away and really apply it to the festivals that are coming up mm. um but preparation is probably the biggest thing that i want you to takeaway um if you have medical conditions in the past you know you've got epilepsy or you know you've got asthma that can get pretty severe i think you need to bring all your meds obviously you know that um but really bring all your meds um don't rely that other people have it obviously us as medics will have the the stuff you'll need um but make sure you bring it all um you're prepared you know where your kind of alcohol tolerance is at Mm. um your piss fit kind of all that kind of stuff yep um and if you do have a tendency to get heat stroke quite easily, um, keep that in mind. And when you're in the mosh pit, um, don't be afraid to step out for a second. Your friends aren't going to break up with you or leave you. I think it's yeah, it's more than appropriate to step out, grab a glass of water and then uh, head back. Mate, home. just on that, mosh pits, like, yeah. I, I consider myself a professional mosh pit goer. <laughs> but, mate, I've seen a lot of people pass out in mosh pits yeah. because oh, they're yeah. fucked, dude. Like, oh, yeah. And, I'd, yeah. I love going back to this story about like the Playboy Cardi one and how the American ones are, but like even Australian ones, I've seen plenty of people pass out at, and they're no joke. Like you're literally getting pressurized mm. like by bodies around you. Like depending on the weather, it could be feel like 40 to 50 degrees in there. Like it's insane. It's literally like a sauna. Yeah. And plus it's like a cardiovascular thing because you're like trying to stay alive. It is like so many different pressures coming at once and like don't take them lightly. Like it is a serious like physically exhausting thing definitely what do you think on that um no i think being inside the mosh pit it it does a lot of things to your body and um i want to talk about this a little bit later as well but some of the experience i've had is um mostly people being in the mosh pit uh, the heat of you dancing mm-hmm. the heat of all the people around you the heat of you not being able to jump out and grab a glass of water when you want mm. um, and stimulants you might take on board can be quite catastrophic to um, your well-being, if that makes sense. So I yeah. think it's something to be very mi- very mindful of is how long you spend in the mosh pit and um, what you I remember there. at like the Playboy Cardi one in Miami, literally seeing people go into some sort of psychosis and like panicking because you're looking and it's like just a kilometre of like p- sardine packed people. Oh, and when you're like, feel like you're going to die, like, no, I actually saw like people like screaming and just like, it was pretty fucked. I've never yeah, seen that in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like it's it's it like yeah, it was crazy. I've never seen more people pass out than that. Like literally, bodies just getting yeah. carried out. Like, and that's why you hear about tragedies like the Travis mm. Scott one, where like it is just huge crowds like you've never seen before, and people going nuts. Mm. Like it's seriously scary because yeah. you like can't control when there's just a huge momentum force going a certain way. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We are going to BTV. So are you, Josh? Yeah, I will be joining you at BTV. So as a patron, out. not as a medic. As a patron, yep, not as a medic. Good, tools down. Gab, what are you doing to prepare uh, to be on your best behaviour at BTV and to make sure you are in good condition? Just getting shredded as hell. Yeah, <laughs> Is that same. what you meant? <laughs> get as lean as possible, yeah. Do medics get a discounted rate on festival tickets? Is there like a... Uh, unfortunately not. Oh, <laughs> we, wow. uh, we pay our way. Come Help on, boy, out. <laughs> what what did you want to say about that though? Well, like what what are you doing to make sure that we're all going to be safe? Oh, I mean, I don't think there's a bloke that cares about his mates more than anabolic Gabe, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, isn't it? Do. Best bloke, best looking bloke, best physique, and cares about his mates. That's certainly not it. Maybe the last one. You do care about your mates, yeah. but yeah, I, I guess you're not answering my question. But that's fine, mate. We're going we're going to BTV. Yeah. Um, we're going to be camping. Are we? I think so. Okay. We're going to be set up and we're going to be going drinking probably a lot of alcohol. 
yep. is my plan personally. But not over my limit. I know my limit. Safely. And um, I think it's going to be hot. So yeah. heat stroke and, and that kind of thing is, is a big one. So we got to stay hydrated. Do you have any tips for staying hydrated, Josh? Uh, definitely do. Um, and I think drinking alcohol, one of the things it does to your body is it actually makes you wee out all your, your water. Mm. Um, it dehydrates you, dehydrates you quite profoundly. Um, so drinking heat, um, hydration is probably one of the most important, if not mm. the impo- most important factors to um, consider. Um, so if you're drinking, ha- try and have a glass of water per, per beer, per standard, whatever you want to want to call it. Yep. Um, and then in the heat, obviously try and maybe even have two just up that even more mm. you know what i've been doing i've been going to the chemist and getting those really concentrated bottles of hydrolyte perfect and i yeah. swear i i neck a whole one of those before i go to bed yeah no hangover it Ooh, is yeah, like they that. taste pretty grim but for no hangover i think it's yeah. worth it that's key so yeah, you'll um, be doing that at the festival i'll get i'm gonna bring like four of those bottles they're yeah, expensive like smart. 15 dollars each but worth it worth yeah. it we've well, heard the saying breaking the seal and yeah um I think it's probably one of the best ways to say it's why alcohol makes you wear out all your water is because when you start drinking, um, your brain stops making this chemical that makes you hold your water. So you just drop it all, which is yeah, why you break the seal. And so it's an actual thing, way. breaking yeah. the seal. Yeah, 100%. So go. when you start drinking, you yeah, start dropping all your water and that's probably one of the leading causes of yeah, why okay. you get a bad hangover is because you're so dehydrated. True. Okay. Okay. Well, when I I just know when I start drinking, I got the bladder of a kid, and yeah. like, I need to piss every ten minutes. It's crazy. <laughs> Once you break the seal, you're not that bad, though. Yeah, are you? Oh, I'm here and there. Yeah, yeah. I, I'll I'll sit through and start sweating it out, mm-hmm. and then I'm I need to go. What about in terms Absolute of like trooper. festivals and stuff in Australia? You were saying yep. before off camera that um you know there's there's all these kind of uh, things they put in place to keep people safe. What what are some of they, and, and what can people do to to utilize those services? Yeah, for sure. Um, so probably one of the things I, I didn't know about festivals before I started working at them was um, how many facilities and groups, I guess you could call them, are set up to help the patrons out. Like um, probably one of the most well-known ones is the Red Frogs that help out schoolies. Yep. Um, they're volunteers. They float around. Absolute shout out to the Red Frogs. They're insane. Do the most. Um, but other things we've got dance-wise. I'd never heard of that. And I don't know if you guys have ever heard of that either. Mm. Uh, but they're... Um, volunteer organisation as well. They set up a little tent. It's insane. Um, lights, bean bags, water, everything you could want. Mm-hmm. Um, it's for people who are feeling a bit overwhelmed, um, maybe because of drugs or just because they can get quite overwhelmed in festival situations. Uh, for them to go chill out and just have a breather for a sec. Mm. That's probably one of the most insane things. Yeah. I feel like I saw that at Splendor one year, and it was like a, a room that was like really quiet like bean bags low sensory yeah literally just like go in and chill out i i could do with one of those sometimes because what what are the red frogs though um so christian group isn't it yeah well they're more or less you see them at schoolies they're probably the most well known for doing schoolies events and stuff yeah um i don't think i've ever seen them float around other festivals um but they carry around red frogs they're there to say good day and make sure you're doing all right and bring your water and kind of make sure yeah get people home safe in general do they have that at festivals um, personally, I've never seen them at festivals, mm. um, but yeah, I think they do do festivals, but mm. just mainly, yeah, they're well known for their schoolies involvement. Let's get into the crux of this episode. What are some signs to see that your mates are in trouble? So let's say, you know, we're kicking along in the festival. It's, it's the second day when people are starting to crack in, um, the sun's going down or even the sun's gone down. It's about 11 PM. Yep. Maybe a few supplements have been taken. Supplements. Yeah. Yeah. A few yeah a lot of gears being taken what are some signs that your friends or yourself are are declining and and what should we look for in that yeah no worries um as a medic um when you when we see a patient we've we've seen them for what the first two seconds that we've seen them and that's our picture of them um we don't exactly know what's normal how they normally look how they normally walk around how they normally act Mm. so i think the best thing for you who for someone who's bringing a mate in is to let us know what they normally are like are they Obviously, if they're passed out on the floor, that's not normal for them. Yeah. But um, if they're slurring the words, let us know. Like you've you've known your mate for two, three years, however long, um, so you have the best idea of what they they look like. Mm. So just passing that information on is probably one of the best things you can do. Um, but also identifying anything that's different if they um start shaking and that's not normal for them, or they're itching and that's normal not normal for them, or mm. you can see them sweating quite a lot, um, or they're big blushed and red and um something that's yeah 
just a red flag for us, I guess. Are there any general things you measure, like a heart rate or blood pressure or any just giveaways like that? Like if it's increasing yeah. at a rapid rate that you're like, this person needs help? Um, well, yeah, for sure. We've got our like red flags um, and there's certain vital signs that we'd look for that when they're outside of those, it's mm-hmm. not, not a good thing. Um, and if you bring someone in the medic tent, we'll do a full vital signs on them, make sure, yeah, their heart rate, blood pressure, oxygen saturations, everything like that's all spit spot. Um, but in the mosh pit, if they've got an Apple Watch, you might be able to see the yeah. heart rate or something mm. like that. Yeah. So do you um, check for things like that? Yeah, for sure, yeah. If you bring someone in, we'll, um, we'll chuck a heart rate on them, we'll do a blood pressure, I'll check out their oxygen, how much oxygen they've got floating around their body and all that kind of stuff we'll do. Mm. Um, I'm not going to spit out numbers because most of you won't understand yeah, the, probably. the um, context of that. But um, a heart rate generally above, it shouldn't sit above 100. Mm. Um, yeah. If you've taken a lot of stimulants or had an energy drink or, or dancing, it's yeah. going to get above 100 and that's it's not too concerning. Um, but anything kind of above the 120 mark, 140, like it's getting pretty high. Mm. Um, I think you probably should go have a sit down. and Bit of hit training. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure. Have you seen some real high heart rates come in? Can you give us a number? Yeah, for sure. What's the highest? Um, so if I had to say the highest, I've seen heart rates 200 to 220. Fuck. <laughs> That's <laughs> not steaming. Not in a normal rhythm, if that makes sense. Right. So you've got a normal heart rate. It's called a normal sinus rhythm. Mm. Um, and people born with certain things or your heart can do special things when it's not getting enough oxygen and that can put it into different rhythms and get heart rates above, yeah. yeah above well. 200 into 300s even. That's oh, scary. Geez, that's scary. Yeah, yeah, very scary. What about in, in terms of, of drugs? I'd assume it'd be like MDMA being the most common kind of thing running around at the festivals and stuff. Do you see, yeah. like, or, or whatever it is, what, yep. what, do you, what is the most common that you see going around and what are the side effects slash kind of medical things that people are often coming to the tent for in regards to that drug? Yeah, no worries. Um, and MDM, MDMA is probably, yeah, a pretty common one. It's a common stimulant. Makes your heart go faster, makes you sweat, makes you dance, makes you euphoric as well, makes you a bit happy. Um, one of the more common ones going around at the moment is probably ketamine. Um, mm. It's quite a complicated drug used for different, a lot of different things, um, but it's a depressant on the body, so it kind of slows mm. everything down um, and makes you feel good as well. Yep. Um, that's real common going around at the moment, and people can quite easily K-hole mm-hmm. um, or overdose on ketamine, um, which can be pretty, pretty severe. So what do you do when someone comes in in a K hole? Um, well, the best thing we can do is firstly acknowledge that and get them away from the crowd. As soon as they're out of the crowd and away and they're in a safe environment, it's, a, it's all good from there. Um, we can manage them, depends on how severe they are. Give them oxygen if they need it, um, make sure they don't vomit and breathe it in because that's probably one of the more severe effects that you can get from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and just make sure they're doing it right and doing nothing that's going to hurt themselves. And if they do start seizing, we can manage that. We're, if they need to go to hospital, we can take them off the hospital. Mm. What about with MDMA? What are some of the common side effects you see when someone's done a bit too much of that coming yeah, to you guys or you sure. might find them out? Um, MDMA is probably one of the more scary drugs, in my opinion. Mm. Um, I think you can pretty easily overdose um, on that one there. And there's something called serotonin syndrome that I think you should be aware of as a listener. Um, and if your mate has a bit of an MDMA fiend or you are yourself, not judging, but um, just mm. be careful with how much you are taking because if you take a lot, you, you can actually, yeah, die from that. It's a pretty sinister drug, that one. So what are some signs like of someone who is kind of overdosing or, or on the path for that? Like what, what do you look for? Yeah. And then what do you do as the medic? Um, well, you might notice them getting a bit hot and flushed. I think it's probably the key symptom is their heat. Heat will go up. Do they wig out much? Like is it, yeah. Is it, yeah so they're freaking out? Yeah. Yeah, so they'll start freaking out, start heating up, start jumping around, start itching, kind of being more agitated and up and about kind of thing because that's what MDMA does for the body. Um, then at the end of that, they might kind of fall over, pass out, and that's probably when it's, well, it was time to go before that, but yeah, it's really time to go when they hit yeah. the deck. Because I guess like from what I've seen, you know, like everyone who's on MDMA is absolutely loving life. Yep. I've, personally, I've never seen it get to the point where someone's like passed out from it. Yeah. Um, but I guess that's what like I would expect is that that almost be euphoric to the point where it's just too late. Mm-hmm. But they can see that like there are signs that yeah. it's going downhill early. Yeah. Um, anything out of the ordinary for that person, I think is something you should flag. And I suppose like you know your mate's the best and... Oh, 100%, yeah. Like put them first. 
Yeah. Like you might be having a good time, but just checking in on your mates, like how are you feeling? Mm. Just be like, and yeah, you, you'll probably be the best yeah. judge at if. Yeah, exactly. Um, was there anything else we wanted to get into on that or? Yeah, plenty. Um, I, I guess like f- from, you know, the festival perspective or, or working on them, um, what's been like the most scary drug that you've seen? And, and what should people, I mean, obviously, like there'll be a disclaimer before this video, before this podcast, like we don't condone doing drugs. Yeah, definitely. That is not what we're saying. We're just trying to empower people. Um, but from your perspective as a medic, what is like the most, yeah, kind of scary, scary drugs? Yeah, okay. Um, well, to be fair, I think they're all pretty scary in their, in their own right. Um, MDMA is probably one of the scariest ones to me. Um, but they can all be taken too far and they can all end up like that. Um, mm. GHB, though, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say, um, is probably the, probably, yeah, probably the scariest. Can um, you explain what GHB is? Yeah, so GHB is a depressant um, and it's commonly used as like the rape date drug. You might, might have heard of that. Um, can be very easily slipped into people's drinks or given to people um, without their consent, I guess. Um, and that tanks everything. So they, um, they can lose their conscious state, which means they pretty much pass out. Um, and then they can actually pick that back up again and it kind of fluctuates like that. So they'll mm. go up and down and up and down. Mm. Um, so one moment you might look at your friend and they're passed out on the floor, not, not responding to anything. And then Fuck. next they're up and about dancing around, trying to do backflips and then next minute later they're on the floor again jesus that's a um a pretty that's common that's so scary louis i've heard like even just like people making jokes being like oh they're a bunch of like scary guys all on ghb and it's almost like a a mean drug mm. do you have yeah. anything to like well, that- i've literally don't even know what it is i just want to know why it's like a, a meme like that and why yeah because i've you're saying it's a depressant but i've heard like there's scary guys that are getting like aggressive on it or something like mm. Yeah, I'm for me, like that was. I remember the first ever festival I went to, um, and like I was with my my sister and, and a couple of her friends, a couple of my friends, and uh, she just she'd been to a couple of festivals before, and she's like, "Oh, those guys just over there are on GHB," and like it was quite obvious. Mm. And these guys like running their heads into a pole, like no, they were seeing how hard they could hit the pole with their head. <laughs> fuck. Yeah, well. and I remember like I was I was probably 18, 19. I remember seeing that, being like, "Fuck, that is." that's like that's terrifying yeah um and then i learned more about ghb and you know apparently the the difference between having fun and, and death is so close oh, yeah, and that's why close, it's so yeah. dangerous so yeah, very dangerous like you can have i don't know how it's administered but let's say you have like one mil is safe and then like you know one and a half mil is like dead so yeah. that's not actual you know but <laughs> well, i've heard it's like that kind of tight and then you yeah. get things like ghb blowouts which is what is that what you were just explaining then yeah 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 so once it's gone over the top yeah yeah ends up in um ends up like that and but it comes with all sorts as well like they they shit themselves they're oh, like shit. pissing themselves just hold your mic up if you can yeah no, they're, they're pissing themselves like I, I mean what what kind of stuff have you seen in regards to ghb um well personally ghb i haven't seen too much of in the the festival environment mm. um on roads i've seen like through placement and um, through working as a surge workforce member of, with Ambulance Victoria, seen quite a lot of GHB overdoses just in the like suburban environment. Mm. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's a really scary drug. I've seen, um, seen patients there in, in their own home where you think they're so safe and they're, they're unconscious, they're not breathing for themselves and you have to kind of top their breathing up and get them off to hospital. So it's a downer. It's not, yeah. it's not, it's not making more, it's not an upper, but yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. bringing your heart rate down, is it? Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah. What's the, what are people looking for? In so it? Like, is yeah. it a high? How or? are people getting aggressive is my question off of like, I don't know. I, don't I suppose know. like alcohol is yeah. downer as well. Yeah, it's a bit true. of a funny drug, GHB. Um, personally, I'd, I'd steer completely clear of it, just like yeah. a every other drug. Yeah. Um, but that's why it's used to uh, date rape, like um, where people slip it in um, girls' drinks and things like that. So yeah. Um, down them, lower their um, ability to move around, knock them out kind of thing. It's mm. That is so scary. Yeah, it's phew, one of the scariest ones for sure. Yeah, I guess that's like, like I've gone to a fair few festivals in, in my day and so mm. have you, Gavin. We've got a like an amazing friendship group, which mm. like we are always looking out for each other in a in a way that's almost like, like we're so obsessed with it. Yeah. Um, GHB and juice is just like something that's so far out of the equation. Like, and you know, you and I are only into the beers, but like mm. we know people and, and so on who, who aren't. And it's like, that is just, it's just not oh, on. Like cool. it's, if you care for your mates and like not to drug shame and, and people can do whatever they want, but I feel like that's just a step too far. Same as like smoking meth or like yeah, doing it's, heroin. It's just like, you just, it's a little bit further along yeah, that yeah. you're kind of yeah. pushing it a bit far, you yeah. know? 
Yeah, I would definitely agree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, I don't know. Are, are there any other... What about like... What else? What I've, what I've been hearing is like a lot of things been... I've got very limited drug knowledge, but I often hear like so-and-so was laced with fentanyl. Uh, yeah. um, and that's like a cause of death for... Like I know a lot of rappers' headlines when they take drugs and it was laced with fentanyl. And I don't, I don't think it's a common drug going around, but I've, from what I've heard, at least it's lethal. Yeah, well, um, fentanyl is an opioid, so it's more or less the same as heroin. Heroin's an opioid, and so is so is morphine. Um, it's used medically as like a um a painkiller, so it stops the pain signals from getting to your brain, um, and also has a lot of depressive symptoms, kind of similar to alcohol type. Um, and fentanyls can really be commonly sliced into other drugs. So you might be yeah. taking what you think is MDMA, and it could be sliced with um quite a lot of fentanyl. Yeah, and that's very easy to overdose. Why do they do that? Is it to save on the cost of production, or is it because they actually want to kill people? Or yeah, okay. Uh, personally, I wish I knew the answer to that question, yeah. but um, yeah, I'm not a not a drug lord. I'm not part of this. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't I quite know why. They I don't do know that. why. Yeah. Like, yeah, I feel like it's because from what I've heard, you only need like a speck of fentanyl mm. to kill someone. So it's like it's just a muck up in the process. Oh, like it's fuck. like contamination kind of thing. Oh really? I believe I, I could yeah. be could be very wrong, but I don't see because like fentanyl could uh, really kill someone, and I don't think I think bad fentanyl <laughs> especially is is a way to way to go. Yeah, definitely. Or one to stick away. I suppose from. that's a a good segue into this whole discussion around uh, pill testing and things yeah. like that. Do you guys want to chat a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I think. It's it's been a bit of a discussion. It's been the last five years in, in bringing it in, and I remember when there was you know a lot of controversy over it. It was like, should we do pill testing? Um, a lot of people said yes, but then some people like often like the conservative perspective is like no because it will encourage people to take drugs. Which personally, I think that is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Mm. Um, pill testing. What do you think? And and is it at the festivals you've been at? Um, yeah. So personally, I'm I'm for pill testing. Um, I think there's you can't control what people are going to do with their, their own lives. I think as much as you can try and restrict it, people are, are going to always want to do drugs and they're, they're going to do them as much as... I don't condone that. Um, people are going to do it. And I think giving them a safe environment, same with like safe injecting rooms and things like that, mm. um, giving them a safe place to um, check their drugs out or inject safely is like a really good initiative to save those lives and make people do it safely. So do you know the process of, of pill testing? How does it work? Is it like a subcontractor, so on? Um... Unfortunately, I don't know the whole like process of pill testing, but at the festivals I have been at, um, it's a really good incentive. I think a lot of people who are there with pills choose not to get them tested because yep. of the the uh, why like they're scared of getting the pills tested and they're scared the cops are going to run over and put them in jail and they're going to lose everything kind of thing. Mm. But um, I think if you are there and pill testing is available and you've you've brought some pills in, it's definitely worthwhile getting them checked out, especially if you've gotten them. Oh, some shady guy in the mosh, mosh pit. Mm. Um, so yeah, to get them checked out. It's worthwhile. Um, figure out if there is any fentanyl stuck yeah. in there and just for your safety. Have you ever done a pill test, mate? Or been involved in anyone doing a pill test? Personally, I've never really like... I've never done it and I've never seen it there, but I'm pretty sure it's like a widely available thing at festivals. I've never yeah. like gone mm. to source one out or anything, but I've heard of like friends going like, oh, I got such and such tested and it came back at... I don't know if they give you like a purity index mm. or something like mm. that or like they tell you what is... Be I think they tell you like what's identified in it, like if it's yep. pure or not or if it's cut with something else. So in my opinion, I think it could be a lifesaver because, you know, you have those conservative types that are like, no, 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 like no one should be doing drugs. Like... Yeah, it's encouraging drug people testing to do drugs. Is yeah. bad until right. it's their son who's at their first festival and you know it's actually a very imperative safety mechanism yeah to know sure. that the stuff they're doing is like not laced with something lethal yeah yeah totally i don't know i feel like such a noob on this topic <laughs> but that that's just like my perspective on it yeah i agree i just can't see it seems idiotic to me to think that like bringing in testing would encourage people to do drugs more like i don't mm. think anyone who's going to take drugs are like weighing up oh is there going to be testing or not because that'll mm. decide whether i do gear or not i had a bit yeah. of a follow-up question on the on this whole pill testing thing from a fan i'm going to keep all fan names anonymous on this just because i think it's probably an appropriate topic to do so he says 
Do the cops follow you when you leave the pill testing booths? Does anyone know? Because I don't know. I'm not sure. I doubt it, but... Yeah, I, I doubt it as well. I think the um, the purpose of pill testing is to make sure you're there safe, not, not to put you in jail. So um, I can't answer that question with 100% certainty, but mm. I can assure you that... You'd bloody hope there. not. There wouldn't be. Yeah. yeah. They'd, they'd be in a lot of strife, I think, the cops, if they were to do that. Mm. Kind of like taking advantage of someone who's yeah. trying to do the right thing. I agree. Yeah. Do you have any follow-up questions to that? Um, yes, yeah, so, uh, yeah, another question is it's so it's not about pill testing but it's more about mosh pits and whatnot yeah what do you do if the person needing help is in the middle of a mosh pit and it's like a travis scott mosh pit yeah okay right well mosh pits can get pretty big i've seen some pretty huge mosh pits um and i think the biggest thing to to do is just make the people around you aware of it like Mm -hmm. the festivals that i've been at everyone's really nice especially to the medics everyone really understands your role they um really appreciate you being there they're um they're really appreciative, I guess. So if someone does go down, I think everyone will do everything in their power mm-hmm. to kind of mm-hmm. make their way out and try and get that person to safety. Like clear the way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So if you have like, if you're say I'm there with Louis, and uh, we're in the the Playboy Cardi mosh pit because I know Louis loves. <laughs> oh, Playboy I'd absolutely Cardi love that, wouldn't I? <laughs> he'd want to be in the mosh pit with me. Get me in L- there. Louis goes down as yeah. a good mate. Like, what should I be doing? Should I be throwing him over my shoulder like a he man or? Mm. Like, um, what What would I be doing there? Yeah, okay. I think um, everyone's scared of security at festivals and things like that. Like, um, they go there and they, they say, they, or they think security is like the cops. They're going to try and throw them out. They just, they want the worst for them. But security is mm. actually there to make sure everyone's safe as well. And um, alerting security, they're wearing big high vis. They're going to run over and clear away pretty quickly. So yeah. you can uh, be a hero if you want and chuck him over your shoulder. But I think the easiest way to do it is to yeah, yeah, cause get security. Yeah, because you often see like the people who pass out they're not exiting the mosh pit. They're actually going up the front, mm. like, and they almost pass them at the front. And one of the big seven-foot security mm. blokes grabs them and they get to go through, like, the barrier mm. at the front there and make their way. Yeah. Is sure. that probably the best... Obviously, depending where you are in the yeah. mosh pit, that, that's probably, like, the best option to note. Because I think, yeah, as you said, everyone's pretty cooperative when it comes to a mosh pit and they see someone in one of those genuine panic states. You should be yeah. able to, like, clear away to the front... Yeah. Um, just like saying they need help, they need to clear away to the front and get one of the seckies to kind of carry you over. Yeah, hundred percent. If you are at the front and um, something's gone bad, let the security guards know. There's, I can almost guarantee there'll be a line of them at the where, where like where the fence is, mm-hmm. and then they'll um, be able to pick you up or let you go through the little gap in the fence and okay. get you to safety. I remember being at uh, Strawberry Fields one year, and we were. I don't like going to mosh pits, and I like to <laughs> just stand out the back and yeah. just like lots of fist pumps and smiling. Um, and uh, th- like that's a bush door so there's a lot of people on some pretty hectic gear there like a lot of GHB I'd imagine yeah. and um, someone would have a GHB blowout in the middle of the dance floor they'd drop like a fly a buggy would come flying Every- it was like clockwork mate like Jeez. the whole crowd would open up yeah. straight in pick them up and out they go and then 10 minutes later another one they just drop like Fuck. another like GHB sounds mm-hmm. like fucking great fun doesn't it they'd fly in <laughs> pick this port he'd shit himself as well pick him up and get him out <laughs> It's straight to the medic tent. It happened like four times. It's just a the, this little like Polaris buggy. would fly in. I'd get him up. He'd be frazzled on the on the dance floor and, and straight out. It was like clockwork. Mm. That's crazy. But that's a different festival, I suppose. To like, I mean, that's a bush door, so it's like very kind of open space. You know, it's not like Travis Scott screaming and dancing. Yeah, it's yeah. like people just sitting there chewing their teeth. And I'm sure there was a bit of room for the buggies to fly in and out of. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, mate, everyone knew what to do. <laughs> <Everyone's> <laughs> spread out. They're all, done it all the zombies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Fuck, no, those are, that's a whole different have you ever done a bush doof no no nah, it's on the on the bucket list though for sure oh mate you'd be busy there i reckon oh, i can imagine yeah. you'd be real surely be like work. upgraded rate for the medics there yeah, <laughs> yeah have you'd a be, bit more work on their plate I reckon. <laughs> double time yeah double time uh, no what about some like personal anecdotes from you what kind of stuff have you seen um at festivals and i mean yeah. i know we've kind of gone through what to do and i think it's all pretty clear like it mm. you just like don't be a dickhead and look after your mates and yeah the first thing you can do is alert a, a professional or a medic. That's that sounds ideal. But what kind of stuff have you seen um, at festivals? Yeah, no worries. Um, I've got a few examples for you. Um, some I was directly involved with, and some I've just heard stories of from colleagues and such. What um, overdoses are one of the more sinister jobs we go to, more more serious. But I think pa- things like panic attacks or even just medical conditions such as asthma flare-ups and things like that mm. are all things that you should be aware of. Um, I've dealt with a few people that are having panic attacks um, and they kind of prevent, present like really, they're breathing really quickly. 
Um, they can't really focus on anything that's going on. They're quite erratic. Mm. Um, I think they're something that you should be aware of. And if your mate's having a panic, ta- panic attack or you think he is anyway, um, to get him to somewhere quiet, somewhere safe, and um, make sure he's kind of calm down, relax, take care of him. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty common, so um, definitely be aware of those ones. Yeah. Um, and one of the more sinister events, which is why I'm pretty scared of MDMA, is um, one of the festivals one of my colleagues was working at, there was um, a patient that had taken quite a lot of MDMA um, and then went into the mosh pit and began dancing quite erratically. So we've got... They've taken stimulants and now they're dancing quite frequently. So their heart rates and um, their body temperature's gone up pretty quickly. Yep. Um, and then they're in a mosh pit, so they're surrounded by all these other people. They're all hot. Mm. Body temperature goes up even more. Um, keep dancing, stuck in the mosh pit, can't get out. Body temp goes up even more. Can't drink any water, don't have any ice packs. Body mm. temp goes up and then it's obviously a really hot day as well. So their body temperature just ends up skyrocketing. Mm. Uh, this person hits the deck and um, comes into the medic tent with a temperature of like 42. Shit. Jesus. Um, for those of you who don't know, body temp's meant to be between 36.5 to 37.5-ish. And it's very hard to kind of very make yeah. Like a fever with way. 42 is like yeah. massive, isn't it? Yeah. So yeah, this person's pretty much brain dead by this point. Like really? Like with a body temperature that high, it's... yeah pretty hard to get it up there and then coming back is even harder so so when they came to the medic tent were they passed out like or like just completely done or were they still going or freaking out um so when they came in they were unconscious yeah um and then because their body temperature was so so high they actually ended up seizing because of it as well mm. so then once they started seizing they're in the medic tent and um this tent was kitted out like if you were going to go unconscious anywhere you, you wanted to be here kind of thing they had mm. doctors resus beds Crit care nurses, paramedics, first responders, anything you can name it. Yeah. Um, available. And this this person ended up, yeah, not not surviving. Really? So it's pretty unfortunate. Yeah, Shit. quite a touchy subject. But um Yeah. I think yeah, it's, it's good to be aware of the dangers of these things mm-hmm. and people who yeah, just think MDMA is all good and fun and super safe, it's it's got a really scary side to it. So just keep that in mind when you are partaking. Do you think that's a, a product of, of that person like having way too much? Or are, is, are some people more susceptible to, you know, being taken down by, by yeah. less or, yeah? Um, I think both those factors. I think certain people are like kind of subject to that more than others. Um, but I think it was a combination of factors that led. Um, he had all those drugs, which put him at that point and then he was dancing all the time, mm. put him even higher in the mosh pit, in the heat stroke, no water, just sent him off kind of thing. And What about in terms of like, um, things put in place for you guys like if you you've if someone's had died in front of you obviously yeah. it's what you're trained for it's kind of what you're ready and expecting almost yeah I, do, is there follow-up like calls for you like do you guys get psychologists so on oh it's insane yeah as a um as a paramedic medic first responder um i feel like we're pretty well looked after in that department and mm. um, we have our colleagues we have uh, numerous support systems in place um, for, for our kind of mental well-being and longevity and things like that to make sure we're, um, mm. we're coping with everything good. That's great to hear. And yeah, I th- feel like I've just heard too many horror stories on oh, it's terrifying, people. Yeah. Like, why would you... Like, do you not have mates around you? Like, not to guilt anyone, but yeah. mm. like, what is the... Like, surely, yes, like people are going to do drugs. Why would you ever go to yeah. that extreme length mm. to the point where you're and who would allow it to happen brain dead dying just seizing mm. anything mm. like that like like who would allow it to get to that point mm. it's pretty scary isn't it oh yeah. mate yeah yeah it's terrifying please guys like i reckon every festival i've ever been to there's always been one death mm. which that, like that's pretty fucked statistics like that. yeah, that's it, ridiculous honestly, yeah. i remember someone got airlifted out of, of one i was at and like brain dead again <clears throat> there was one recently i think it was pitch yeah um obviously mm. another horror it. story yeah another horror story i was at falls one year and i, I weren't they the, the orange pills yeah and oh. everyone got a text who was at the yep. festival saying don't don't drink, don't eat orange pills like you, you yeah, you'll yeah. die there they had something in them and then like i think my mum texted me because like that yeah, was same, in the news same. like please be careful yeah, yeah, well. yeah um but then like as a parent how do you you know, like I, I feel like you have to, from a young age, you want to implement the right things. Obviously, you want to say don't do drugs, but if you're too hard on it, I reckon some of the kids who go the hardest that I've seen, they can't tell their parents anything and like, mm. 
they are almost out to prove. So, mm. wow, difficult situation. Mm. I think the whole of festivals are difficult, aren't they? Yeah, for sure. I d- yeah, I don't know if we have like the the clear cut answer mm. for it other than just yeah. be responsible. I mm. think preparation as well. Like um, for those people who who know they're going to do drugs, they've already thought of their plan to sneak them in and. Honestly, I'm just gonna say, don't don't do it. Don't go ahead with that plan. But um, if you if you do end up going ahead with it, make sure you are prepared. You plan ahead. Um, you aren't standing in the mosh pit for ten hours straight. You take your breaks. Go out and grab some water. Let your friends know how you're going. Mm-hmm. Making sure you're not getting too hot. Grab an ice pack from the medics if you need it. Um, just really utilize the services that are there to help you, um, mm-hmm. and just take your own safety in your own hands. What about in terms of like come downs? Do you, do you see much in terms of like kid, people panicking, super anxious or like I've seen people having a come down. Just quick story. I was very young, 18. I was at a nightclub yeah. with uh, my girlfriend at the time, my now ex. And um, we walked outside and there was a guy, it was near a car park mm-hmm. and a guy standing at the top on a come down mm-hmm. and he was like, I'm going to fucking jump off the roof. And my girlfriend at the time wanted to stay and watch. So I grabbed her. We went straight inside. I don't know what happened, but... Yeah that like is envisioned envisioned into my brain of like what a come down can do have you seen much of that what do you do about that uh luckily i haven't been around that side of things too much that's pretty like a severe end of um Mm. thing but um panic attacks and things like that are really common especially drug induced um they can be really scary and um i think you need to yeah watch out for them and if you are taking drugs be aware that you you can potentially be getting a come down and that should be in the forefront of your mind as well when you're mm. preparing for a festival if you're planning on taking all this mdma make sure you get your water breaks and then make sure you have something to do the next day and you've got good mates around to kind of mm. get you through those hard times and watch out for you what goes up must come down yep. that's exactly right Generally. enjoy the crime you do the time <laughs> yeah. as they say that's very yeah. true yeah i think um uh, like i've made a lot of tiktoks about looking and uh, we've made a lot of podcasts about looking after mates and stuff and and like Recently, I got a bit of hate for it of a TikTok I made. Like, oh, so lame. Why don't you kiss your mates or whatever? Or like, hook up. But it's like, this is why. Yeah. Like, Scary, we yeah. put so much emphasis on looking after our mates, especially the second we, when we're going out, like you, me, and, and Tom, when it's us three together, it's like mm. always looking out for each mm. other. Um, but then festivals, again, like to our whole extended friendship group, like everyone is fully eyes on. And whilst we're having a great time, it's like you're always looking after your mates. And then you see people like mm. who have, who aren't there, like, like they're strugglers who always bump into people at festivals and they're kind of you know oh my mates are over here and it's like they're absolutely legless yeah it's like how the fuck has that happened Seriously, that would never yeah. happen with us. yeah just like credit to our friendship group it's so good i remember the recent boiler room um you were still away yeah but we all went to that and i remember I was, i'd had quite a few drinks and i actually just forgot to eat the entire day which is an absolute death wish death oh, wish sure at like a very sweaty it's called Boiler Room, mm. um, <laughs> event like that. And I remember everyone was having a blast. Yeah. And uh, I was focusing on staying alive. <laughs> everyone yeah. was like having so much fun. And I was like, fuck, this oh, isn't yeah. that much fun yeah. to I'm be not honest. having fun. And on top of that, like I love everyone, but a lot of people coming up to me oh, wanting photos that. and like mm. I was fucking Imagine. trying to pull it together, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> and so I had my, um, one of my, our fourth housemate, he, um, I said, mate, can you help me out here? So he goes and fucking grabs me out, um, go to the toilet, take a piss, um, then go and get some food. Still people coming up like is what it is, but try mm. to like, mate, I just need to get yeah, some food. But also it. you don't want to make it embarrassing either. Yeah. Um, but like just a friend like that who is willing to almost sacrifice, like it was the, the main set, um, bring me out, go grab some food, go to the toilet. Like you need yeah. mates like that that are really unselfish and mm. credit to him, best on ground. Yeah, um, I heard. That was absolutely huge for me. And yep. I think it's really important to have friends like that, not friends who are, you know, uh, Louis, can you help me? No, sorry, mate, I'm busy nah, chatting mate, this bird. Fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're fine, you're mate. Fine. You're right, pull it together. <laughs> no, oh. mate, mate, I'm not feeling good. <laughs> you're fine. Yeah, <laughs> Get over it. So have selfless mates like that. Oh, mm. for sure, yeah. I think that's almost as important as just wearing the right shoes to a festival, like having mm. a mate there to look after you, carry you out when you're not doing so well. And mm. It's super important, yeah. 
What about other injuries at festivals? I, I had someone on my shoulders. I reckon when I was 18, I used to have a, the world's worst back. And I reckon <laughs> I put this girl up on my shoulders and I'm still recovering. Like L5S just snapped oh, straight no. away. Have you? <laughs> you're, you're a powerlifter, but yeah. Louis, <laughs> oh, um, if he deadlifts 40 kilos, his game back's going to... If I pick, pick oh, the bar no. up, it's game over. Have you had people like muscular? Have you pull, pull a back or anything? Surely. Um. Or a hammy? <laughs> As in, like, someone muscular has pulled their back? Or, or no, sorry, like, have some, has someone done something muscular? Like, have they, they oh, pulled okay, a hammy yeah. or something and come to the medic tent? Um, probably not one of the more common injuries that you'd see at a festival or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, I'm sure there are people. Most people probably walk it off and things like that and go see a physio the next day. But yep. if, if you do do a muscular injury, definitely come in and see the medics. Yeah, like, they could help you out. And we've probably got a doctor or a surgeon or... These tents, are, these are kitted out tents. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. Just come see us. We've got anything you need in there so it's unreal do we want to do a tomorrow skincare plug mate a sponsor plug yeah. it's a bit hard to how do, roll I, into how do we integrate into this yeah. it's a tough yeah. sell it's <laughs> i know really it's relevant. a real tough sell but you know what we're going to be at btv and guess what i'm still going to bring my tomorrow skincare kit because otherwise i'll break out and look like one ugly motherfucker so yep uh i will i'm pretty sure what well, we got like vip tickets so hopefully we got warm showers um warm unlucky enough. if you got the cold ones have fun we'll probably be there <laughs> with you to be fair but yeah yeah i mean even with the cold showers you can still do your skincare routine i think Mm -hmm. um so first of all i think it's a shared gender shower usually (laughs) fantastic um so have fun in there but make sure it's consensual yeah and (laughs) get the water on you get a bit of water on your face then put the cleanser on your face and then when you're back at the campsite um you can flex on everyone and do your skincare routine and have glowing skin on day four of a festival. I think the trick, I've done a few festivals in my day and the trick to feeling good is starting your day well Mm -hmm. uh, at a festival. So if you have a bit of a routine, I try and stick with it. I'll be bringing all four of tomorrow's skincare steps uh, and I'll be getting up in the morning Probably yep. not too bright now. Going for a jog? I won't be going for a jog, and but a I'll be high bowl. Hi- <laughs> <laughs> I'll be hydrating. I'll be having a shower. I'll be doing my four step process. Mm. And then I'll probably be tucking into a few beers. So yep. that's my plan of attack. And you guys should do that. Frothingtons too. at 9 a.m. Yeah, in the definitely. morning. Yep. What is it? No, I can't say that. That's encouraging binge <laughs> drinking. Um, so if you want to buy, get something from Tomorrow Skincare, use code NTF and you'll get 20% off. Yum. I'll be doing that. Thanks, Louis. Thanks, mate. Uh, next one. Uh, nah, Manscaped. 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 We love Manscaped. Uh, what can we say? Oh, obviously, we all want to look shredded for the festival, right? It's a must. Yeah. Uh, That's so what we tried. I'll be getting every single piece of body hair off my body except my face. Yep. Uh, so I'm talking legs. You know, Gooch. my nipples is no, not there because <laughs> oh. it's not really on show. All oh, right. <laughs> I hope oh. not. <laughs> oh, you hope not. Make yeah. it look shredded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he hopes not. <laughs> all right. My nipples are, I don't know why, but it's like the only spot on my upper body I grow hair on. You do. It's fucking weird. <laughs> Tough. Literally it's everywhere is hairless <laughs> except that. So I'll get the manscaped on the nips. Um, yeah, nice. Everywhere else too. Yep. Um, you should probably do it as well. Otherwise, you're going to be behind the game. And you're going to look like some sort of hairy gorilla. Mm. And like, I don't reckon that's, that's festival season worthy, to be honest, mate. I agree. Yeah. The Manscaped tees are also pretty cool. So you could wear one of those during the day. And if you see us at BTV, come up and say good day. And say, oh, you know what? So side note, we're in Bendigo, right? Mm. Um, and I was like up on stage doing champagne showers, which is a whole another story. Mm. But I had like kids show me their orders for things. <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> passing me their phone, show me that. That's the coolest thing ever. But they just kept showing me like, oh, I use code NTF or like, oh, I bought something off your website. It's fantastic. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> we hope to see lots of that at BTV. Um, so yeah, if you do want to do that uh, and show me at BTV that you've done that, Use code NTF, you'll get 20% off and free shipping at Manscaped. Thank you very much. Now, we've got a brimming mailbag. Yeah, yep. Let's whip through it, mate. All right, let's do it. I've got a question here. Um, How do you not lose your mates within five minutes of arriving at the stage? Which is a good question. That's a very difficult question. Yeah. Um, Keep your cell phone charged. Yep. Know the map. If you can, before, have a sus, like, check out the map, see where the stage is, toilets, all that kind of stuff, so you know where you're going. Um... Just try and keep an eye on them as best you can. I've got one. If always, before a festival, chat to your mates and say, we will always be at this location of the stage. So like, I think we're always like front left Mm. or whatever, what we ever decide. But if everyone just says that, then you've like literally narrowed down the stage, like the, the audience to a point. So like have that chat with your group of mates, say we will always be front left, no matter what. Doesn't matter how cooked anyone gets, they'll always be able to find you. Uh, Actually, that wasn't what I was going to say. Um, what I was going to say is like, 
you could determine a mating point mm. through the festival. Like mm. if something goes bad, like yeah. mate here, if you can't find because a lot of these festivals, you don't have actual reception. Mm. So you could have like a meeting point. I remember at Rolling Loud, which is probably more than 10 times bigger than any Australian festival. I had a few mates there and we set out like a meeting point because there is no connection there. It, it's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's just, can be pretty overwhelming to be honest so determining like a a meeting point can really like as you said limit Mm. searching the whole map you can just go to one bit yeah so like that same kind of strategy i guess yep good answer but i am also the ceo of ditching my mates and going to the mosh pit (laughs) by myself and i'll find you later kind of thing so i'll probably be doing that as well at btv to be honest but good yeah look after him if you see him on his own please gab do you want to be under a tree we'll find him bro i think i've provided all my questions yeah that's right i got one here best way to help your mate affected by heat stroke slash exhaustion i really like this question i think this Mm. is um a great info um so if someone is like super heated doesn't matter if they're taking anything or not but they're, they're quite hot um, first thing, get them a glass of water. Get them out of wherever they are. If they're in the mosh pit, get them out. Um, get them to a hydration station. There's plenty of them around. Um, even take them to the medic tent. We'll be able to give them for, like um, ice packs and things like that. Mm. And I, um, I think it'd be great to put it behind the neck, forehead, under the armpits, th- places like that. Mm. Um, instead of just putting it flat on your chest, just tuck it in one of those spots and it'll help cool them down pretty quickly. You, you know what they had in America is they'd throw these little um, like 250 mil things of water. Oh issue was i wasn't thirsty i just get pelted in the head by it it was more of a concussion rule than a dehydration <laughs> thing so you get rid of one problem and you could create now another you need panadol. So like literally they'd be <laughs> like that boom, oh, boom, no. <laughs> your hand on needs a bit of improvement it was fire so. in the field mate it was Dodge ridiculous balls. that's gold well fantastic i think i am coming out of this very informed mm-hmm. gabriel i think this is your rule book uh, yeah. to go to for the upcoming silly season festival season Absolutely. Yeah, Once again, very hectic. Yeah, we don't condone doing drugs and we don't think you should do them, but hopefully if you're going to do them, then you are informed. Josh, thanks so much for coming on, mate. Where can people no find worries, you? Guys. What can we search on TikTok, on Instagram to, to follow you? No worries. So it's pretty simple. Just j.joyce101, both TikTok and Instagram. Fantastic. Um, go give my TikToks a like. They're... Um they're flying. They're flying. One's yeah, almost six million views. That's oh, crazy. Yeah, that's six million views. That's the one where we found you off. That yeah, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Great sure. work. Make sure you guys well. go and do that. And um, thanks so much for listening. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for having Bye. me, guys. Thank you.